Yes, welcome to Reconstructing the World, where we today is going to see a lake that Anas has been making. It's not a very beautiful lake. No, I'm kidding, Anas. This is not, this is not something Anas did. Today we're going to look at that building there. Yes, very young, as usual. Anas? Yes, sir. This is resource rose. Yes. But this is actually one of the buildings where I met you. Yes. This is very fantastic. Um, as usual, <laughs> Anas has made something fantastic. This is, if you look around, maybe the camera can pan around, you can see all these kind of buildings where, uh, you know, this is very standard new buildings. Yeah, it's like this is like a new town that's being established. Everything looks Ørestaden. Yeah, Ørestaden. It looks pretty much the same. It's like various shapes of blocks. Yeah. Uh, and then you got this assignment, right? Yes. And this this was actually this is uh, some years ago. It's a it eight year eight years ago. Yeah. And. Um, and as you can see, like everything is these standard blocks of buildings. Yeah. And uh, and here again, we also had a very defined uh, kind of site that we couldn't change too much. But what we wanted to change was the fact that why couldn't we build these blocks out of waste resources? Why yeah. couldn't we? Why couldn't we again show that? When people move here to Ørestaden, they usually come from outside of the city and moving to Copenhagen. Yeah. And then this is kind of a, a new suburb somehow. Yeah. And uh, when you and, move, and, when and you, you move yeah. from the city, you take your dogs, you take your furniture, to you take even your kids, bring them in, move them in with you. But you leave the buildings. Yeah. And uh, so the idea here was, what if we could build a new building out of old buildings that we harvested around Denmark? and collected them, moved them in, and would build with them here. And that's why all these bricks that you see, they are different yeah. uh, kind of uh, uh, resources, different kind of buildings that we harvested these materials from. Yeah. And the wild thing is you can actually see, yes, but if you shoot up here, you can actually see, this is like looking at a, a small city somewhere. And the, the reason why we did it with these types of bricks is yeah. because in the mid 60s, something changed for, yeah. for the brick world. Over here, right? And that is that uh, the mortar went from being, um, you can say, uh, more uh, um, natural based materials or, or without cement yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to a mortar that's cement based. Is this and cement that was based because, here? Yes. This, all so of the, this all is of this. very concrete. Yes, all of it. All of this, all of this is uh, cement based. All this so you can you can't separate the bricks, ah. and that was the problem because we've been able to recycle bricks for three, four hundred years, uh, as the monks has done it, and we've done it for so many years, and then all of a sudden it stops because we have to make a more efficient building industry. Did you say, as the monks did it? As the monks did it. Because what you're very high on monks. I love monks. Monks, not monkeys, monks, Buddhist monks, monks, Christian. Why did, this is a whole nother story. We need to make an episode why monks are suddenly tearing down houses and building them again. It's like, yeah. But this is, this is, Anna's. We have to go back to the monks. No, no, this, no, we definitely don't have to. But look at this thing here. Like there's a small something from the old days. So what did you do? You you just went out and just cut buildings into pieces or what? In theory, yes. So what we did was actually for the first sketch proposal for our client, we uh, we, we heard about this thing that, that you couldn't disassemble a brick building. You could only crush it. So the idea was, you know, what could we do? So we made a test with a neighbor building to our office yeah. that was going to be demolished. Yeah. So we asked them, can we try and cut it out? And then we had a uh, kind of a diamond cutter. I would love to hear that call. Do you have? Do you have? Did you record that call? Or could we reconstruct that call? Okay, we can. let's try and reconstruct that yeah, call. Okay, let's so do that. So I'm I'm the owner of that building. Yeah. So I'm over here. You're over here. And then you calling me. And it's a it's an old phone. Yeah, yeah. It's eight a really years old ago, phone. Eight years ago, nobody had mobile phones. No, it no. was a. So, okay, so yeah. you're calling. Operator, please put me through to uh, 
to the owner of this building. Yeah. Yes, hello! This is Anders Linde, I'm an architect. Uh, I have an idea. Could you let me cut your building into pieces with a mechanical saw? Are you one of those elitists that is trying to take over society and make every fun, fucking thing elitist and then try, and then you come here and trying to cut up my building, you elitist the architect that only, you know, I make America great again. Bye. Did you, did you hang up? Yeah. Okay, so we decided to do it anyways. So we went over there <laughs> and then we That's very started elitist. cutting That's actually up the, very elitist. Yeah, it is. And, uh, and also a little bit illegal. So we started cutting up uh, this building and um, it only took one minute and 40 uh, seconds to cut up a square meter. Like one of these? One so, of these. So this and, is a square meter, right? Yes. And we could see that if it really was that quick to create one square meter of brick, I mean, it would be impossible to find anyone who could kind of lay the bricks that quick. So we thought this is a, this is a business model, maybe. This is a way to design. So we presented that to our client instead of a sketch. And he said, this is a really insane idea. Okay. Um, let's try and go a little bit and further then, And then this. you said, and Monks is going to build it. <laughs> And, monks and that's what he said, out. that's not insane, because they have been doing this for 200 years. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Yeah, it's only the strongest monks, because they were like two or 300 <laughs> kilos heavy. But, uh, okay, so, so, I need, I, and, before yeah, you go yeah, further, yeah. I need to ask you something. I know yeah. it's a detour, yeah. but there must be a story about, the, like, there's one of these here, and there's one there, yeah. and then there's one over there, and actually I see two, three up here. Yeah. What, do you know what it is? Do you, have total, do you have total overview of I, the whole building? <laughs> I don't know all the stones. I okay. know that we have in here, we also have uh, filler stones. And ah. filler stones is stones that, uh, yeah, it, it tells its, its own story. That it's a, it's a stone where there was a hole where yeah. we needed to do it, a detailing. So we, we, of course, cut out like 95% of these. Yeah. But some places there were smaller pieces where we, we had to fill in. And I don't know if that's a filler stone where we could handpick some cool stones okay. as well. But there is, it's, what you can see here is that it's actually full of mistakes. Yeah. So one thing... And that's what you love in a building. Patina, storytelling and so on. So the, the brown ones is actually from a brewery in Carlsberg. Brewery? Brewery in Carlsberg. So this how one, old are these? These are from, I think, 60s or something like that. Um, but the stone is actually really nice. It's, a, um, it's a, not a machine stone. It's actually also really beautiful. Yeah. But uh, this was from Carlsberg cut out. Yeah. Uh, the yellow ones are, as I remember it, um, from building in Olbo, uh, an engineer school that was uh, demolished. And the red ones come from uh, 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 primary school in, uh, in Aarhus. So, so this was a collection of materials from different places in Denmark. And the point here is that when you find a building, yeah. you can start harvesting and putting them aside. And then we assembled them to these building elements. Yeah. Um, and we have two building elements yeah. uh, typologies here. Um, but the idea was to begin with yeah. that we wanted to build with them just like a normal brick building with a facade where you, you see them as uh, if, if a brick is a Lego, then you have a br brio, is that what it's called? Like yeah. big blocks. And, um, and here we were building with big blocks on top of each other, as you can see here. So the, so the new kind of um, seam um, would be here between the, these. Yeah, these broad ones, yeah. right? And, and we also found out that because this is stable yeah. as a block, yeah. you could turn them around, you could push them in yeah, and out yeah. quite easily. Whereas this has given us a way more complex facade. It's and, really and, and, and you can really feel, I don't know if, you, if it translates to the camera, but, but you can really feel a huge difference of history and time, yeah. no bullshit. Uh, this is normally people are like, yeah, this because you know yeah, yeah. it's a fine wine. You can taste all the things. This is fine bricks. You can taste all the things, yeah. but but you can actually feel 
and also with the wood that is a little worn down, I think also yeah. maybe a story there, but you can actually feel, and also with the, the pushing in and out yeah. in the difference, you can actually feel that this is yeah. much more alive than other buildings that we compare with uh, around here, right? And you're totally right. We actually called it the square meter uh, building in, uh, in the office because the design of the building started with this square meter. And then uh, when we were designing the building, we could see that if we made, you can say like here, yeah. um, uh, a, a block element that is three by three meters yeah. approximately, yeah. we would have like a larger block. And when we put this in, and then we have the next block and the next block. So it's kind of this checker mark design, yeah. but it's actually designed or, or the concept comes from this one square meter. So, so can I ask, so one block being installed here is yeah. all the way from here to here yes. and up there. So it's yes. like a huge block. It's, yeah. it's not each, each block is not put in this, this. it's like a no. one big block. Yeah. Right? Look at this life here, right? Look at the thing here. Yeah. That's it. Over here, and then look at the life on this side. Yeah. It's actually, it, it is actually a, a, it's both a visual, visual, but it's also a very, very tangible yeah. uh, feeling. Yeah. You can really feel this building. Yeah. It's uh, the materi materiality and the yeah. tectonic, you can say here, really plays out and creates both narratives, but it also plays with the, uh, with the light yeah. all the time and the yeah. colors. Yeah. And uh, now this building is, uh, it has some years uh, on it and, it and it looks, in my opinion, really, really good. Also in summer, yeah. we have a lot of green, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind, of, uh, um, kind of starting to grow on the facade as well. Yeah. And the interesting part here is, and it's not to, uh, to shame on the other buildings But here, let's do that. But anyway. that's, uh, <clears throat> that's done at the same time, same economy, yeah, yeah. the same kind of main framework yeah. for it. And, and here we've been experimenting with, uh, with the materials um, and trying to get as much out of it as possible. So what you're saying is like, okay, so is this the same economy as this? Yeah. Okay, so no, I, okay, let me just try. finish that and let's go back to that. What I wanted to say is that it, it is actually very, very wild that you can over time see this building become more li alive yeah. Yeah. and cool. And then you go over and see this building, which has this uh, new building decay, yeah. right? Yeah. Whereas from the start, you build in the decay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's extremely tangible. Yeah. And, 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 and has, and I can, you know, now we're filming in the worst <laughs> of times. Yeah. Uh, February, late February, yeah. start March. Yeah. It's like, this is what we call the piece of shit season. Uh, ice in cold. In Denmark, it's like ice cold annoying wind. I have to agree that it's a paradigm shift in how we see mat materials in architecture, that, it's, that it starts with a, with, a, with a story and a narrative from where it comes from. Yeah. It tells the story to have whoever is here that something is happening. And that is a totally new way of, of building new buildings with waste and old resources. Yeah. But one of our challenges here was that, as I said, we, 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 uh, we were forced to put these uh, tile blocks into a concrete element. So for the apartments that you see here, where we have five floors and seven floors in the other end, these are made in a more traditional concrete element factory and delivered, yeah. which means that we have concrete in, which was not what we wanted. No, no. And for these, which is the row houses here, um, we were allowed to do it a little bit different. There's still uh, some concrete seven centimeters on the back, so yeah. it's, it is kind of a, a big element. But then we have a wood buildup in the back, so it's a, it's a lighter element here, which was uh, the quickest way to build. Yeah. What we had hoped to do was to eliminate the concrete, yeah. where, yeah. We, have, where we actually have, have uh, built it up with uh, hempcrete, uh, uh, cast it in as insulation and also a mock-up here where we see it with uh, recycled wood and, uh, and wood insulation. But that was not possible to do in this project. But, uh, but to, to say okay to build with the concrete uh, uh, back wall, uh, it made it possible to try and recycle. And we're recycling 12,000 square meters um, uh, building here, yeah. which is uh, quite a lot. 
um, uh, to recycle in a totally different way. It's an innovation that's not been done before we did this. Yeah. And this is, and, and, and so as, you, as usual, you experiment with this, you experiment with these new materials. Yeah. And so is this a method that could be then uh, copied and done a lot of places? Absolutely, and there's, we also help other clients to do it. But uh, but um, but it, it's it's important that you are willing to try and build it into a yeah. project like this. Um, and um, there was, of course, a cost here. Yeah. So the price for the bricks were higher than it probably was with these bricks over here yeah. because they had to be cut out. Yeah. So there's one guy cutting and then lifting it out yeah. manually and so on. Yeah. And what we've done now is actually. Uh, we got um, uh, the government has yeah, helped us yeah. with uh, something called the MUDP, yeah, yeah. where we got some money to uh, to create a robot that is cutting this down. Yeah. So the robot is a uh, is a way to optimize. So it scans the building, yeah. and then it uh, goes in. It doesn't look like kind of robot robot. It's, it's not, not like a robot. It's not robot. like a, that kind of cutting. But the cool thing is yeah. that then it's way more efficient. It's uh, saving a lot of time and economy, and it's making it a lot easier to yeah. cut down these pieces. And so now we come in here, and this is the 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 what do you call in in between space. <laughs> this is the <laughs> this is the this is the courtyard. And yeah, and courtyard. What is you, the u door. unique thing here is like it's a super yeah. narrow space. Yeah. And to create a cool uh, courtyard here, where all the a lot of the plants here are edible, you yeah. can't see that now. No. And then uh, creating a kind of these unique uh, small, tiny um, yeah. plateaus or gardens that you share here, and you also see the recycled concrete brick of uh, this bridge. is cool. And uh, that is actually from a, a factory here on Amma, yeah. a box factory. Yeah. It's a roof double T deck. Yeah. And uh, the experiment here was, would it be possible to re direct recycle a concrete yeah. element? Um, and of course, that saves a whole of lot, shitload of CO2. Yeah. But it's also kind of a way of saying, maybe if concrete should have a chance of being a meaningful, sustainable yeah. material, we should direct reuse it. But look at this. Oh, this, this is great. Yeah, it looks really It nice, looks right? really fucking good. This is homey feeling. Yeah. I can imagine here. Yeah. It's being super great, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a very, very cool, fantastic thing. But just tell me, this resource row, the difference between material, you know, what did you save doing this in yeah. terms of uh, like an ecology footprint or a resource yeah, footprint? I think <clears throat> this building here, uh, over a 50 years lifespan, it saves, uh, I think, it's around 45% CO2. Mm. We save 30% CO2 just looking at the, the materials. Yeah. But the, inter the interesting part here is that it's, it's actually only the facades yeah. and then some flooring <laughs> inside. Yeah. Then also the wood that you pointed out, you can see all the wood yeah, over yeah, the windows. Yeah. But it's a very little percentage. Yeah. But because it's a really CO2 heavy yeah. part of the building, we save that much. Yeah. So, so this was the first kind of building we did with focusing on a really complex element that had both an aesthetic, environmental, and also kind of a, an impact of how the user starts to yeah, understand yeah. their building. Yeah. So it has many elements in it, even though it was the first kind of large scale building we did. Yeah, it's a fantastic building.